Hello everyone, it's Jeffrey again from Rubik's Academy and today we're going to look at a very interesting instrument and the instrument is Bitcoin against the US dollar. So for those of you in the space, okay, you know that uh, Bitcoin just undergone a halving, just underwent a halving, right? So a uh, halving basically refers to the fact that the block reward has been effectively halved. So what is the block reward? The block reward is the Bitcoin blockchain's way of minting new Bitcoins. So at a fixed timing, at fixed intervals, new Bitcoins are being minted. So the rate at which new Bitcoins are being minted will be halved. Every four years, it will be halved. And yesterday was the occurrence of the halving, meaning that from 12.5 Bitcoin being produced approximately every 10 minutes, now it's 6.25. Right, so the supply is getting lesser and lesser. You will never get to zero because no matter how much you half a number, it will always it will always be positive. All right, but it will get lesser and lesser. Now, so today we're gonna look at Bitcoin. Okay, uh, I think that's the number one instrument we'll be looking at. Of course, over at Rubik's Academy, we do equity analysis mainly, but because I know that some of you are interested to know what's my view on Bitcoin against the USD, I'll be doing. Uh, a, a special video today just for Bitcoin against the USD. All right. So you can see this is the Bitcoin chart. As per usual, those of you who watch my channel, you will know that my thinking process is always I start from the all time chart. Not even five years, I start from the all time chart because I think that's the best way of analyzing a, a stock actually. Okay. Any stock, you start from the all time chart because you need to know relative to history what is happening with, with, with this instrument. Okay, so you can see that with the all-time chart, I'm going to plot the important levels. All right, I'm going to plot the important levels. Number one, you always plot the support first. Okay, so you use dotted lines to refer to support and resistance levels. All right, the next thing you do is you plot the resistance levels. All right, so there's a resistance right here. And then there's a resistance here. All right, okay. And then there's another resistance here. Okay, so let me just denote the different resistance in different colors. This is blue, this will be in purple, this will be in red because it's the nearest. Okay, so look at the red dotted line and the, okay, let me change the color, maybe not red. Red is a bit too, uh, change it to maybe this color. Or this. I think this is a color. Let's just stick with red. Okay. So you can see there is a red dotted line and then there's a yellow dotted line. Those are the closest resistances and support levels that we are. All right. Those are the closest resistance and support levels we are working with. Okay, so after plotting on the all-time chart, I will give my overall view. All right, so you can see as of now, the RSI is neither in the overbought or oversold zone. All right, and then you look at the ADX, you can see that there is no trend. There is no trend at all. The ADX is just slanting downwards. So on the all-time chart, there is no trend. There is no force that is pushing Bitcoin in either the bullish direction or the bearish direction. So there's nothing. Everything is just in consolidation mode. All right. So that is my thought process. Okay. Then we talk about fundamentals. All right. So usually what happens after a halving is that block reward goes down. With the going down of block reward, miners will profit less. Okay. Miners will stand to profit less. Okay. So in the short term, my view is that it will be bearish for the Bitcoin. That's number one. Number two is it will be bearish also because of the pandemic. All right, the pandemic will eventually force people to understand that this is a crisis, this is not temporary, and they have to. The stock markets will start reacting the way that it should. As of now, the stock markets are not reacting the way it should. They still believe in the long term viability of the economy. That's why they don't think stocks should go down, and therefore stocks are not going down, especially the S and P five hundred. But the Americans, all right. The global economy will be forced to a wake-up call when they when they start to realize that this pandemic is causing irreversible damage in the short term. All right. So 
Overall, my outlook is bearish. I'll be looking for a chance to short Bitcoin before even thinking of longing it. All right, so I've come to that conclusion. I made my stance. So where do I go next? The next thing I do is I go to the smaller time frame, three months. All right, the smaller time frame, the using the bigger time frames and fundamentals is where you decide whether you want to go bear or go bull. Then for me, my style of trading is after I know my direction, I look for the exact entry point, and that is where you come down to the lower time frames. All right, the lower time frames. That is where you look for an entry and an exit point. That is where you start measuring your risk reward. All right. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, you need to refer to my previous videos. Okay, each of my video is meant to be short and sweet. It's not meant to uh, actually coach you. All right. That's why I made a lot of videos. You have to subscribe. You have to understand the full picture before you know what I'm talking about. All these terms I'm using. Okay. So you can see that. We are close to a resistance level of 10,739. All right, at its current levels. All right, you can see that at its current levels, it's basically consolidating. All right, you can see that it's again, RSI is neither overbought or oversold. Again, even on a smaller time frame, ADX is going down. So there is no direction whatsoever for the Bitcoin. So what to do? What should you do? What should you do? Okay. Now, I already stated my stance. I want to be bearish on this instrument. The next thing you should do is wait for the trend to confirm your bias, to confirm your stance, which means wait for a trend to come back, especially a bearish trend. Okay, if a bearish trend comes back, meaning ADX starts to slant upwards, ADX stands for average directional index, meaning RSI starts to go into overbought zone, okay? If this everything converges and there's a bearish trend that's forming, that is where you can start looking to go back. Okay? That is how when, when, when you can start looking for an entry point. As of now, I don't see any entry points. Okay, although you can see over here. Okay, you can see over here, there was a crossing of the green lines below the orange lines, signaling the start of a bearish trend again. But as of now, using this chart, I don't know where to go in. There is, there is no level. The closest level that I, I'm looking at to even go in for a shot is here. Okay. The white box. That is where I'm looking to short BTC. But as of now, it's not moving. It is not moving. It's just being consolidated. I think people are still reacting to the halving. Everybody's on the sidelines. They don't know what is supposed to happen after a halving. After all, for the previous two halvings, I believe, okay, this is the third halving. For the previous two halvings, Bitcoin wasn't well known yet. Okay, this is the first halving where Bitcoin has actually grabbed attention on Wall Street, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, where crypto and blockchain is actually considered within the financial industry. So everybody is waiting and see and thinking what's going to happen. If everybody is thinking what's going to happen, then nothing's going to happen. Okay, until a whale comes in, a whale refers to a market maker. That means somebody who's willing to buy when nobody's buying, okay, or willing to sell when nobody's selling. Until a market maker comes in to actually start a trend, then you will see the bandwagon effect or the herd mentality. All right, the herd mentality is going to be strong for this one because everybody's looking for a direction and nobody knows where this pair is going to go. All right, so for me, I'm looking for the white box to shop. All right, look for the price to go up to 10K. Other than that, I'm not confident in shopping. Okay, another resistance that you can see is around here. At the 10,000 level, at the 10,000 whole number level. All right, so this whole zone right here can be your shopping zone, can be your entry zone to shop. All right, then your stop loss will be around here. Okay, before the next resistance. Color it red.
Okay, the red box is your stop loss zone, all right? Your loss margin. So where is your profit margin? Your profit margin is immensely big, okay? It's immensely big, all right? If you short around here, you are looking at a whole profit margin of around this much to the next support at least, okay? But honestly, because this is Bitcoin, I don't recommend you waiting until it reaches the next support. It's too much. Just go for a 2 is to 1 risk to reward ratio so that you get out of the trade quick. So maybe around here. This should be about 2 times. Okay, 2 to 2.5 times. Okay, so there you have it. All right, these are my recommended levels for trading BTC against the USD. I am a bear on this pair. I am a bear on this instrument. Okay, so I hope that video helped with some clarity on Bitcoin against the USD. Please subscribe to my other videos. Subscribe to the channel. There will be lots of educational content for you, my viewers, because I believe in sharing the good stuff. All right. So at the same time, Rubik's Academy is not just about finance. We'll be having other causes. There will be a lots of interesting subjects that will be displayed and talked about in our academy. All right. See you in my channel. See you at Jeff and Lim Rubik's Academy. All right. Thank you so much.